Alexa, turn on studio. Okay. Should we go with blue? Yeah, I like blue. And let's get you on. So those are questions I get asked on a very regular basis. What are your settings? How do you grade? What picture profile do you use? And honestly, I find it quite funny because I don't really grade and I don't use picture profiles most of the time. So I figured we'd make a video talking about that. And today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. We'll talk more about them later too. So I'm gonna share with you what it is that I actually do use and the reasons that I don't color grade. Now, I'm not saying color grading is bad, I'm just saying for me, this is the workflow that I use and it just works better for me and it always has. So what I use is actually called a creative style. Now you've probably not even seen it in the menus, you've just glossed over it, scrolled right by it, but it is actually right next to picture profiles. Now a creative style is a set of baked in settings. According to the Sony manual, the official word is, it's a function that provides a styles preset in the camera to help you achieve your photographic and artistic visions. It sets the contrast, sharpness, brightness, and depth of color essentially for you. And the two that I use most frequently are autumn leaves and neutral. Autumn leaves makes colors a little bit more vivid, particularly the reds and the yellows. And I find it is a bit more contrasty than anything else. And I quite like that look. And then neutral lowers your saturation and your sharpness. So it gives you a little bit of a flexibility to be able to grade if you want to. You can't do a ton with it, but if you want to change and tweak a few things, you can. Even on Sony's website in the manual, it says for neutral, this is also suitable for capturing image material to be modified with a computer. Now that does probably pertain to photos more than video, but I've tweaked it a little bit in post and it works just fine. Now, one of the big reasons I opt to use a creative style of a picture profile is simplicity and ease of use. This applies especially if you're a beginner and you're new to this whole camera world, picture profiles, that kind of thing. Focus on story, content, and composition. Those are gonna be what stand out more when you're a beginner opposed to how green your greens are or how blue the sky looks because you haven't tweaked it just right. If you go straight to HLG or S-Log2 or something else first, before mastering it, before learning all the settings, you're very likely gonna end up with a very flat, gray, ungradable image. Imagine you've got your first big break shooting a wedding, and you're doing it on the cheap to get your name out there and you shoot the whole day in S-Log2, but you don't expose properly. You get it to the grade, you get it to the edit, and you realize there's absolutely nothing you can do with that video. It's ruined. Can you go and reshoot that? Nope, you cannot. That's now a reflection of you, your work, the bride's not happy, you're not getting any referrals out of that. So you gotta make sure that you master the settings before you start using them properly. So try starting out with a creative style first. In your downtime, learn the different picture profiles, how you expose properly for them, and then when you wanna start learning how to color grade, maybe give Skillshare a go. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes for creative people like you and I. You can explore new skills or deepen your knowledge on existing hobbies. Skillshare offers creative classes designed for real life. They're available when you are, probably like right now. We're all spending a lot of time inside, a lot of time in the house. I've been trying to improve my storytelling recently and a course that actually helped me and might help you too is called Create a Short Documentary Video Portrait. Hi, I'm Elaine McMillian Sheldon and I'm a documentary filmmaker. I tell stories across platforms and mediums. She actually walks you through the whole process and shows you how she is gonna make a film, including research, shooting on your own, equipment needed, editing. And then she actually shows you the film while talking about it, like a director's cut. And then jarringly cut into the park Pigeons flying, one of my favorite shots. It's very engaging, interesting, and if you're looking to improve your storytelling, like me, I would highly recommend giving it a go. And in terms of color grading, Skillshare has some solid classes on it. Video editing with Final Cut Pro 10 from beginner to YouTuber is worth a watch. And if you use Premiere Pro, I'm sorry for you, but there is also some courses on there that help you learn to color grade in Premiere Pro as well. On Skillshare, everything is curated directly to learning, so there's no ads and it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. And the first 1,000 people that click the link in the description down below will get their first two months of Skillshare Premium for free. All right, back to more reasons that I like to use creative styles. Another big reason I like to use a creative style is the time that it saves. In the past two years, nearly every video on this channel has been shot with a creative style. I can film how I want, expose it exactly how I want it to look, throw it into the timeline, edit it, and not have to make any changes. That saves a ton of time. People think that making YouTube videos is quick and easy. It's not. Any video can be from 
six to 10 hours of work per week easily, sometimes often more. And I've been playing around with HLG recently. You may have noticed it in some of my videos and some other picture profiles too. And I can tell you it adds at least one to two hours for the color grade on to make those videos. So to save that time, you think one video a week over the past two years, that's a lot of hours. So for me, a creative style just saves a huge amount of time. So for things like YouTube tutorials, even some time sensitive client work like real estate where it needs to be out really, really quick, I think a creative style is often all you need. I firmly believe that you shouldn't have to work harder than you should. What's that phrase? It's uh, work, work smarter, not harder. That applies to a creative style. Now the final reason I like to use creative styles just kind of developed and evolved into a reason itself. And that is that most people can't tell. Based off the comments that I receive from people asking how I grade, what settings I use, even from client work. If they think it looks really good, I think it looks really good, why would I spend the time to use anything else? What's the point? Now, I think it would be silly to ignore the fact that picture profiles, HLG, Cinephore, S-Log2, they have benefits. There's a time and a place for using them, specifically when it pertains to dynamic range, being able to get more from your color in post. That's That has benefits. I completely get that. I understand it. But for me, for YouTube videos, tutorials, certain client work, I kind of think a creative style is more than enough. So don't write off creative styles and I would highly encourage you to try them out. You might find it's more than enough for you. It's all you need and you might be happy with the results. If you like any of the stuff that I've shown in today's video, you like any of my videos probably from the past two years, as I said, all creative styles and autumn leaves and neutral. Those are the two ones I use. All right. That's it for today's video. Hopefully you got something out of this. Let me know how you get on. If you already use a creative style, pop a comment down below. I know I'm not the only one out there. There's a bunch of people that use them too. Otherwise, I will see you guys in the next video. See you later.